and today's uh we will just uh introduce you with what this course is all about right so this course will introduce you with the concept of finite element methods okay or in short fem in solving a practical engineering problem so this course would cover the principle of the fem direct stiffness methods as well as uh, some other uh, conditions like prismatic bar under axial loading stress structures so on and so forth okay what you will realize is that uh, this course have a similarity with another course okay that i think you will take in this semester called CAE okay computer aided engineering okay so CAE basically is a is a wider scope okay where it covers on how you we use computer to apply uh, or to solve those engineering problem problem okay whereas on this course itself we focus on the methods or the concept behind those solutions okay we call that as a finite element methods all right so that uh, that method itself uh, is the fundamentals for all this uh, computer aided engineering right so this course will have a cost outcome that uh, basically map to three program outcome okay we will apply to your engineering knowledge okay problem analysis as well as the design or development of a solutions okay so this course will have a five course outcome that includes from applying mathematics okay and engineering to actually identify and model the problem okay through the finite element methods then we also from there onwards we also need to approximate okay the problem initial as well as the boundary conditions okay from there we we call it discretizations okay we make them into digital okay digit okay discrete okay we call discretizations of model and then we form the model for in order for us to solve it okay using computer right so in this course we will focus mainly on a structural problem okay which we intend to solve for stress Okay, displacement okay on top of that we will touch a bit more on maybe on the thermal and fluid problem okay we will touch on it okay how we can extend it slightly to towards that okay and finally uh, hopefully you will able to use a uh, software okay simple software to, to actually solve a very simple problem okay to exhibit a uh, that you understand the concept behind this finite element methods okay you have uh, several reference that you may start to refer to okay so in this course i will mainly uh, focus or will i will follow mainly on this uh, text okay called finite element methods the first course which are uh, written by professor logan all right so you can try to get this reference okay beside that uh there are several other reference that you may go through it all right so this uh this reference you can download it as well all right uh i think from mit website all right then oh one more thing that you may want to refer is this lisa finite element analysis uh tutorial and reference guide again this one you can download it from the lisa uh website okay lisa website uh where this is a free versions of finite element analysis software right where it will give you some tutorials about it right so try to obtain a, a copy of this uh, reference right for the max distributions, I propose a 10, 30, 20, 40 uh, breakdown. All right. So for the quiz, we will have 10%, test 30, assignment 20, 40. All right. So I will try to put a simple quiz. Okay. 
after maybe every lecture okay maybe after every lecture a simple quiz just to test your understanding about uh, what you have learned at that particular particular day all right so maybe two okay throughout uh, seven or eight lectures so you basically answer already 20 right maybe 20 questions okay that will contribute to your quiz percentage right then on the test we will we will have uh, two tests okay one assignment and uh, one final exam right okay do uh, for this course we try to cover in seven chapters okay starting from the introduction which we will touch today then from there onwards we will start to uh, explore on the methods okay we start with the spring stiffness method okay again a very basic uh, mechanical system spring for uh, spring spring smash uh, system all right then from there on we slowly develop the concept okay and so on right so we have the string stiffness method then chapter 3 prismatic bar element and truss systems followed by beam elements then we talk about what is a uh, plan stress plan strains conditions okay how we apply the the these conditions into different kind of uh, situations right before uh, then after that we will start to move into the heat related uh, heat transfer related application which related to thermodynamics right and finally the fluid uh, related application so, so these two chapter mainly more on exposures okay not more on the development of the of the theory itself whereas on the structural part where you have you can see from chapter two three four and five that is the fundamental and you mainly uh, covers on how we can apply it for a structural problem okay to find the stress as well as displacement okay then on the other two chapters mainly is just to expose to you okay how it can ex be extend okay for other type of uh, problem beside the structural problem all right um you may want to use MATLAB okay but uh, I guess uh, for this course uh, to make it easier for you to understand all right uh, I would just recommend you to look for Lisa okay Lisa FEA okay Lisa FEA just google it Lisa FEA then you will see uh, a software okay a website okay that you prompt you to download right so it basically allows you to use it for free up to 1000 knots okay 1000 knots all right so what you need to do now after this class just get uh, a copy of this right lisa fea right install it right now come to this all right as i've mentioned previously uh, this course is very similar to the course called cae okay S basically CAE is a broad usage of a computer software in order for for us to solve the engineering analysis task okay and it includes not only fea but also it being extend to other type of uh problem okay so we have fea is part of it okay there are other problems like f uh, cfd okay computational fluids dynamics they have uh, multi-body dynamics okay mbd okay durable optimizations so on and so off so forth okay so cae is more on the general part okay and fea is part of it okay the concept of it to solve mainly on the structural problem right and this uh, CAE also may include the uh, CAD, okay, as well as the CAM side, okay, the manufacturing side of it, right? For the FEM, okay, again, we have this uh, two terminology that's uh, being used uh, quite uh, often interchangeably, right? So one is FEM, which is the, the cost name, okay, the finite element methods. And the other one is called finite element analysis, FEA, right? So the difference is that 
FEM refers to the mathematical procedure. Okay, how we use the mathematical solutions behind it. Okay, to solve for it. Okay, so that would be more on the theoretical part, right? So that's why you have the the cost outcome to apply the mathematical knowledge to solve for it, right? Whereas the FEA, right, is just uh, the terms to use, okay, for a problem when you apply the FEM, okay, right? So if you do a, an analysis using FEM, okay, an analysis using FEM, we call that as FEA, okay, that's all. Now come to a, a deeper part. Okay, so what is FEM? What is the finite? What is the element? Right? Because we call this is a method, right? So what is the finite element, right? So here the finite elements come from the idea of uh, we try to break our problem into a smaller problem. Okay, when we try to break it into a smaller problem, we start to define what we call as element, right? So here we have the discrete uh, methods okay, to approximate the solutions to the boundary uh, value problem. Right? So you have, uh, when you try to start to run a finite element uh, analysis, okay, so you will see that uh, the software will generate something like this. We call this as a mesh. Okay, mesh M E S H, right? So all this mesh itself, actually, you can see that if this is the the outer one is the the shape of the original uh, object, okay? Then internally, you can see that we form multiple straight lines, okay, or triangle, right, to approximate this particular shape. Okay, so that's why we always say that uh, it's a discrete numerical technique for approximating a solutions okay there are some parts which is not straight we represent it with a straight line okay to in order for us to solve it okay so in order if you want to get a better approximation then you need to add more elements in between it right so that is the concept of elements and we call it as finite because we still can count it okay the computer need it to to solve it part by part right so we still have a certain number even though one million uh, element is still a finite element one billion element is still a finite element because we can still count it so the computer will do a looping to solve for every single element in uh, inside it right so the very critical uh, components or key words is that we form a discrete element okay and we form an approximate solutions right so these are the two main criteria right so here we have we call it discretizations of uh, the geometry okay by meshing okay meshing and dividing the geometry into elements so these elements okay the big shapes we start to cut them into various small triangle okay to approximate it right so we call that as meshing meshing right so once we able to mesh it into five every single elements then these elements now we can represent it with a mathematical models and when we combine it solve them simultaneously we would able to solve it for the whole uh, geometry right so that is the concept behind it right so basically uh, the concept of it we discretize it combine them to get the result right so therefore for the majority of the solutions that applies FEM it's always we call it as an approximations okay there is no real answer okay it's only an approximation what you see on the computer is just an approximation solutions right so you can see various type of elements that can be a straight line we represent that by a beam okay which you have you will learn later on or a bar all right then slowly we turn into 2d we have a triangle quadrilaterals into 3d we have tried uh, 
hexagonal, tetrahedral, and so on. All right. So these are the the formations of the finite element from one dimensional into two dimensional into three dimensional and so on. All right. So this uh, kind of approximations, then you will start to question if it is an just an approximation, will it be true? Okay, what the computer generate? Basically, um, for time being, we still can safely say that the approximation solution is quite close to the accurate. Uh, yeah, accurate uh, conditions okay provided it is done correctly right this is the very important key okay done correctly okay so therefore in the FEA or FEM itself okay everything is an approximations very important is that you need to do it correctly so first thing we need to get aware of is that the approx the accuracy of the approximations is always critical okay very critical uh, in order for us to predict the real answer all right then that would help us to make a decisions whether that product can be used or not okay whether it is safe to use or not all right so therefore this in order for us to generate this kind of uh, approximation we need some kind of knowledge okay about this fem okay what is actually happening behind it okay how we it will affect our solutions okay and that's why the terms called when it dance correctly is when we have considered all this kind of uh a problem that may occurs to our uh, models later on right so here they have a saying that uh, because of all this FEA package use the same FEM principle therefore basically if you use any FEA or yeah, FEA software itself they they will give you the same answer basically the same answer because the underlying principle is the same right the only difference in terms of result is that the boundary condition that you are going to set okay as a user as an engineer itself okay the boundary condition that you are going to set that includes the constraint the degree of freedom the material properties as well as the load okay so this is where you have to tell the computer what is the the correct value that to put in okay how you would uh, constrain it all right because like uh you have a mouse okay you if you want to design a mouse this part is attached right so how you going to to analyze this attachment okay so that is where you have to define the boundary con condition to uh, represent the so-called attachment right whether a uh, certain force is being uh, pulled back okay to to replace the so-called attachment or so on right therefore the, here we say the designer and engineer must accurately apply the loads and boundary conditions in order to get the real answer okay therefore why you need this course is because everything is depends on the user right as in computer science garbage in garbage out what if you put uh, okay to the software then you will just produce a garbage out right a garbage or or non-reliable results okay you can just put one newton okay it give you a certain value but it doesn't mean anything because one newton if it you don't know what value to put okay to simulate a the pressure when I press okay so if you don't know what is the the force okay typical force that you're going to apply to it okay you just randomly put one okay then the software just generate or calculate the value for one okay it's not representing the actual force that you're going to put in right so therefore very important is that uh, you have to be a knowledgeable user okay and where this 
course will helps you to make you understand what is actually happen behind it okay why you have to select this kind of elements okay and not the other elements this will affect the result of your simulation you don't depends mainly on the software okay the software will help in certain way okay but then uh, at the end the user must know what the software actually do behind it right because the model for different uh, different situation is slightly different the result will, will affect it okay which you will learn later on right so the on the software side okay the factor that actually affect the accuracy would be how easy to set up the FEA problem if you try a very let's say you you are using you have I think you have the experience to use a CAD software, right? So if the software itself is not easy to use, therefore, in order to set a boundary condition or maybe to set a certain value, let's say if you want to select this curved surface, okay? If the software doesn't allow you to select a curved surface, it can only select a plane. Therefore, if you want to simulate a force that on the curved surface it will be difficult for you to enter all these values right so therefore again uh, the software itself will play a role in helping you to make you easier to key in all these boundary conditions input and so on okay but then it's still up to the user to key it in correctly right that is the main concern right so based on that, uh, this FEA and simulation solutions can be break into several parts. Okay, they consist of the meshing. Okay, meshing part. Right, we call it as the discretizations that you have seen previously to form the triangle and so on. Okay, the software can generate this mesh for you. Okay, but how good it is you have to do the judgment or assessment on your on on it on your own all right so the software can have a technology to mesh it okay it then have a technology to solve it okay and then have a technology to pre-process it okay pre-process it is means it interpret the the result for you okay to set up the boundary conditions and so on okay and finally post processing to visualize the results right so later on you will start to understand all this term meshing sewing pre-processing and post processing okay in the FEA uh, analysis right so if you have uh, questions you can start to type in right now come to some questions okay how can you measure the accuracy of the result generated by different software okay here we call it package okay because it, remember in the FEA software itself they have mesh they have solution they have pre-processing they have post-processing so usually they they are packed together we call it as package right so here is how are we going to actually measure all this accuracy okay when all of them actually produce an approximate solutions okay if you use software a it generate this result software b it generate another result okay how are we going to know which one is more accurate okay second one is running the same okay properly set up a problem how can we know which of the approximate solution is the closest to the real right so first thing is between two software which one is more accurate second one is which one is actually closest to the real right so basically uh, in research okay we still uh, trying to 
produce a better solutions but the best way to to compare or to answer all this is still doing an experiment right so at the end we still need to do or compare all this with a reality right so you may run various so-called uh, simulations but once you you are satisfied with certain si one simulations you may want to use a real experiment to compare it right that is what we call uh, to validate the the results okay and also you can also use so-called industry benchmark and validation studies okay so this is one of the examples on how we can uh, validate uh, the model of the heat okay where that will form the so-called heat affected zone right so this is the real experiment okay that we cut through okay after doing the welding okay the welding right so you can see that there is a heat affected zone and this is the simulated one okay you can see that the difference is uh, about 0 0.1 millimeter okay in terms of depth and also in terms of width okay therefore we can now uh, slowly calibrate okay and apply it properly right so this is how we can uh, apply our knowledge into the final element analysis Okay. The importance of this final element methods can be seen uh, nowadays. Okay, remember in the first year and second year throughout uh, the studies, you have learned about strength of materials and other things where you learn uh, how should I say uniform shapes, common shapes like straight lines, okay, a bar and so on, right? But when it comes to a more complex problem. You may not able to actually calculate okay therefore this final element methods will become a part of uh, the modern engineering okay to solve complex shapes problem okay then also uh, because we can simulate it uh, using different uh, values okay easily therefore we actually reduce the trial to market in the old days okay we have to fabricate do a testing okay experimentally but nowadays we just have to do maybe a few at the beginning check whether it's match with the analysis model or not okay if it is uh, it match with the analysis model then now we can forget about the experiment first we try to simulate okay using the software on different conditions until we satisfy Therefore, we call that as to reduce the trial to the market, okay? We reduce the number of real testing, okay? We do it in the software until we satisfy, then only we check again with the experiment whether it's the software uh, result is matched to the uh, experiment or not. If yes, then we can start to fabricate or do more at once uh, testing. Okay? Then also, nowadays, the software have uh, a a features okay or a new technology called topology uh, optimizations okay so what you can see in these figures are actually generated by software okay so this uh, software uh, based on this concept of finite element method okay where they can calculate the stress and so on so this software now have the capability of do this optimization by themselves okay you just tell them okay i want roughly this height okay i want roughly this height okay i have a circle that i must put over there because this is a bracket there there are also few circles that i have to put so that um, you can mount it to yeah a bracket itself right then from there onwards you will tell the software that this design must be able to maybe sustain uh, 1000 kilogram okay in certain directions then the software now will start to generate their own shape okay they call it as an optimizing of topology optimizing so therefore you can see that the shape that being generated by the software is a bit odd itself okay you can see curve here and there right there are straight line that's normal uh, 
engineers in the past will not uh, do something like this okay we will do something more straightforward okay so this is how we call it as a topology optimizations and with the tech combined with the technology of uh, adaptive manufacturing the 3d printing therefore we can generate this this kind of bracket okay even though we have a complex shapes okay we can print it out all right uh, for for market so this actually a uh, titanium alloy bracket okay that's being topol uh, that being designed using topology uh, optimizations for Airbus 350 okay which have uh, reduced the weight of the the previous design by 30 percent right so this is another another topology uh, optimizations okay from this original shapes okay it generate the other shape that functions as it is okay to sustain certain load in certain directions and the weight have reduced by 65 percent this kind of weight reductions is very important for airplane okay because when they fly they use a lot of uh, fuel right therefore with this kind of technology nowadays with the software we can run all these things okay here is the process of fem okay generally uh, we would want to have a reliable and effective okay uh, models okay to predict the the results okay so here we have the physical problem which is our real problem okay then we come to a mathematical model okay we make some assumptions okay what kind of loadings what kind of materials boundary conditions and so on so forth apply to the finite element uh, model okay or finite element software itself okay the methods itself so inside the challenge is that what kind of elements we we have to select okay the selections of the finite elements okay what is the mesh density how close they how small is the mesh how big is the mesh that is suitable right the solutions the loadings okay and so on so forth all right then from there we can assess the accuracy refine the mesh and other things so that uh, eventually we converge to what we want okay then we interpret if it is good we can further onwards if it is not good we have to refine our uh, analysis model again and come back all right so this is the process okay to to run a so-called finite element methods right so the final element method software itself mainly come in these sections only right in these sections whereas the rest is uh, more external uh, user interpretations itself right so when we talk about the effectiveness and the reliability the effectiveness of the mathematical model that we apply inside will actually give a lesser uh, give a sufficient accuracy with a less cost okay here the cost that they mean is the computational cost okay because some model itself some mathematical model that apply to the element is quite complex or hard to solve okay if that is hard to solve then your computer will take longer time to solve it right so that we call it F as effectiveness whereas on the reliability more we touch more on the level of accuracy right so the model itself whether it's generate the the response that match to the desired accuracy or not okay that would be on the reliability of the fem software right generally uh, i would say we have two approach for a structural problem one is force one is displacement which we will cover slowly right so no need to read this one okay so we will cover slowly uh, throughout uh, the chapters okay just keep in mind that uh, since we use the text 
by Logan, all right, the textbook by Logan. So generally in that book, uh, we have uh, these general steps of FEM. Okay, and these general steps actually uh, very similar to the other final element methods. Okay, the method is just, uh, yeah, it's, it's the same. Okay, stem steps. Okay, or maybe they may break it into more more steps only okay in other books and so on right so for a structural problem first thing we need to discretize our problem then we select the element then from there we will select the displacement function this fun displacement functions refer to our model or equations right then from there we will start to define what is the relationship between the displacement and the strain displacement then strain with the stress that's why you can start to calculate for the displacement strain and stress right then from there we form we'll call matrix okay so that we can solve our problem in the simu simultaneous uh, way okay simultaneous equations solve them to get our answer so you have derived this matrix okay then solve for the equations okay yeah solve for the equations okay in between we may have to combine the elements together solve for once we solve for the unknown or the displacement itself then we can solve for the strain and the stress after we get this one okay so this i would say this uh few parts okay uh up to this okay step three okay up to stress step three is mainly called pre-processing okay pre-processing means uh, when we in the software we say there are three newton uh, force acting on this particular point right so the software now will do a pre-processing they will interpret or generate a mathematical model okay to to represent that three newton force okay in the equations we call that as uh, pre-processing right then we have the solutions okay then the post-processing where we want to interpret the result okay because this the computer will generate only numbers okay they will tells you you put three come through some models they give you five right we call this as solutions okay five is our solution let's say right so these solutions if we have one million elements there are five there are 5.1 there are six there are seven so how are we going to to visualize to or to interpret all this result the software will have the capability to visualize we call it as post-processing to interpret these results okay and put them into color right that's why we call it as post-processing part okay so generally as we I've mentioned previously all these steps can break into pre-processing, solver, and post-processing, right? So three categories of steps, okay? Creations of the models, interpretations of all these things, then solver only mainly to do the solutions, okay, on and the convergence. Then once you get that, we will try to use another algorithm, post-processing to visualize it, right? So this is what a typical final element software will do okay this is what they will do in a so-called package right and our our course okay for this semesters we will focus mainly on the equations or the theory behind it okay what is actually happen okay behind all these models okay and how it will affect okay when we apply different type of elements Okay, different conditions and so on right so here are several applications from structural and non-structural okay we can solve for stress buckling vibrations impact for non-structural problem includes heat transfer uh, fluid flow magnetics and so on right so this is one of uh, a work okay that we can actually control okay and do some codings behind the software okay so that we can control let's say this is a, a 3d printing or a welding itself okay so we can generate like 
how we can add all these elements so every single of this is an element so when the the maybe a laser or heat source is moving so it will start to generate one layer after another so you can see again uh, okay so you will start from first layer okay generate the elements then second layer on top of it okay third layer on top of it and so on right so on the side way okay so it looks like this okay on the side right so one layer after another layer okay so this is uh, generated in the final element software right so you the software don't have intelligence <laughs> you need human to do all these models for for it to solve right so that's why you need to learn the basic okay for us to be able to become a knowledgeable user okay of the software right so that's all for today's introductions so any questions so far before we call this sessions to an end just an introduction see you and stay safe right bye